It's you again. What is it? Yeah, well, <laughs> there's a little bit of a problem. Uh, Class A says she wasn't raped. Uh, fuck. I knew that fucking horror couldn't be trusted. You've hit a nerve. Titus is furious. No more than that. The loyal Titus feels betrayed. Uh, for the record, uh, Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify the victim as a whore, nor did he say anything about trusting her. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. She's just a denial asshole. You don't understand the traumatic, ex traumatic experience. She's shutting down and she doesn't fucking trust you. Yeah, she's crazy, you know, the rat-faced man says carefully. A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. Crazy ass. She was very lucid. She wasn't raped. The lieutenant's voice is beginning to betray his agitation. The witness's statements were very clear on this. Lawman, I'm at my end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. And she, you went and pushed her. I'm gonna fucking... Titus Hardy. Her voice rings through the room like a warning shot. Everard personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? Someone has to rush in and break the tension. The second is in command. The second in command, yeah. Look, copper, uh, we know the dead fuck was a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. Really? Show it to him, T. What's the harm, right? Here, jerkwad. Listen to this shit and then come back and tell me the soldier of the apocalypse was an innocent man. Oh, why should I care about the tape? You, you, you lied to me. You don't care about evidence? The fuck are you for cop for then? Pigs, T. They don't care about getting the truth. They care about getting convictions. They're fucking keeping score on their bulletin boards. I won't be your bulletin board. If you don't listen to the tape, we got nothing to, work to talk about. Alright, well, what is what's on the tape? What's on it? We call it the Door Gunner Mega Mix. You'll know why when you listen to it. Now that is intriguing. You had me a Door Gunner. Alright, well, where'd you get the tape? You think we go into this... Deaf, shit, and dumb. You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. Actually, there are a few. Crypto analyst, radio officer. Actually, sir, there are numerous degrees you can get in signals intelligence. Yeah, like you have one, smartass. He looks to the left. There's a beer like that he forgot. Beer. So you bugged him then. How? We have machines. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. Understood. You listened in on their communications. It takes a little note. How long? Since way before their chief started ask, taking swing lessons. Things got nice and quiet after that. Oh, which one of you is doing the advanced radio work then? It's not advanced. You're just holed up in a coop all day writing down what they say. It's all it gets hot as hell in there. It's fat Angus then. Don't put yourself down, Angus. It's important work. Chief picks his beer back up to offer a silent toast. Yeah, man, you're a radio genius or something. There's notes and some depth stuff, indexes and shit. Is this... Was he potentially doing this down in that abandoned room that we found? Or is that completely separate? Uh, we know where to listen to this. We have a boombox, so thanks very much. Don't forget your tape, law man. Compliments of Titus Hardy. Alright, I'll listen to it. You do that. Oh, and remember... Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday. Hmm. Okay. Well. Tape time. Use the interact button to inventory to inspect the item. Magnetic tape acquired from Titus Hardy supposedly holds a recording of a mercenary task force radio communications rec recorded via a de-encryption station. Not a good omen. Requires a boombox to play. The porter reel is just what you needed. The reel attaches to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. Uh, let's play it. This isn't Revishal, a man's voice says. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. Another loud screech, some kind of machinery. The harbor. That sounds of a... Cavalson crane. That's the crane that we accessed, right? More static. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens, too. Gonna rent a room. Cordy, a real nice one. This part is unintelligible. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. 
I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dancer whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Never did get the taste out of my mouth. A click, then silence. The rest of the tape is empty. Lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your porter reel. The tape stops spinning. So he didn't say he did it. He says that he would do it, which wouldn't stand up. Uh, a click, then silence. The rest of the tape is empty. Uh, what was that at the very end? The silence. End of recording. Uh, what do you think? It seemed authentic enough, uh, probably recorded off their shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. Incriminating. It sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. Yeah, I agree. It also sounded inebriated. Still. Looks at the tape. You're familiar with this look. It's this look of suspicion. Uh, who's this Cordy? One of the other mercenaries, I think. The one he was talking to, a friend of his. And what's Kohoi? A village south of the Samarin Insola in South Safar. Grad committed war crimes there. The kind of things he talks about. Uh, you think he was there? Who knows? Maybe the tattoos could have an answer. Or maybe Kohoi is just merc talk for atrocity slaughter. Okay, well, what now? I think I've got a few more questions for Klaasche, don't you? Uh, this seems to contradict her testimony, at least to some degree. Uh, I mean, I guess. Talk to Klaasche about the door gunner Megamix. Hardy gave you a recording where he, the hangman supposedly testifies his intent. Yeah, his intent. Have a listen on the playback device, either in your room or find one from the pawn shop. Okay. I guess we'll go back and talk to her. Uh, I want to see... I was thinking maybe there's a way we could like place our speakers down, but it doesn't look like it. You should pick that fat juicy cigarette butt from the tray, light it up, and smoke the living shit out of it. Oh, uh, am I a smoker now? Who knows what you are, a monster, a murderer, the gnome of Jeroma, you feel it like a smoker, especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub, still smoldering deliciously. Ah, oh, but she broke the filter, I can't smoke that. How very astute of you, this renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette, or better yet, an entire pack, strike that, a carton. Make sure you're all healthy and able-bodied, then smoke them. Uh, I don't know. I, I should, uh, I should, I don't know. <laughs> I'll think about it. Good. Thinking about yummy cigarettes in your mouth is the next best thing. Make sure you think about juicy sticks of tobacco all the time, though. It doesn't count if it's not all the time. And when you're done get thinking about them, graduate to getting them. Plus, smoking gives massive bonuses. Find smokes and smoke them. All right. You need to get your hands some cigarettes and then smoke them for these massive bonuses. Find a pack, put it in your hand, equip it in the held slot. The smokes will do the rest. Excellent. Wait, do we don't have access to this now? Oh, good. It's weird that this is like a separate little room. And all that we could see in there was that, you know, the bed was made in haste. So I'm not sure what else it's getting at. Officer, what brings you up here in the rain? Well, uh, actually, Titus Hardy gave us a recording where the deceased states his intention to commit rape. She puts her coffee cup down. Did he? I never said he was a good man or that he had good intentions, only that he was never bad to me. Well, it's interesting. On this tape, he specifically identifies you as the target. Hmm, and where did they get this recording exactly? intercepted uh, radio chatter of the deceased recorded via a de-encryption station it's authentic enough she arches her brow does he say he's gonna do it soldier of the apocalypse style uh yeah those are the exact words he used yeah that was practically his pickup line she picks the cup back up a memory surfaces in her tired neocortex it's not entirely unpleasant did he say whores a lot? Did he say pretty much on the verge of doing it Kohoi style? Yeah, yeah, the whole, yeah, the word whore was used. He liked the way it sounded when he said it. As to Kohoi, 
The young woman lights a new cigarette with the butt of her old one. He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, at least he didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little cohoy. It was in his everything. Why say things like that? Like just machismo? Yes, he... Was he bragging? Oh, no. I, I'm pretty sure he did all those things, then interrogated... Or integrated them into his idea of normalcy to keep on living until they just sort of turn into his... She thinks, what's the word I'm looking for? A coping mechanism. Running joke. I was going to say running joke, and it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. He was like the Seminese conflict, the Kohoi massacre, and the 36 famine in Yisad all rolled into one person and the cast in Oranyi's ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the shower. Oh, aren't you afraid of this guy? Actual art degree coming through. Afraid of what? That tape the Hardy Boys recorded? Your mother's probably never told you this, but girls are evil. Had I the physical robustness and social support, I'd be in Kohoi. I would be tearing it up, Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Did he tell you he actually had done any of those things? Here in Martinez, I mean? <laughs> no, we were too busy laying waste our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed happy, I guess, at ease, as much as a man like him could be. There's a small measure of pride in her. That she could quell the rage in such a being. Like she like won his, won him over, basically, or converted him almost. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready, I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. Hmm. Hey, uh, now that you've had some time, can you tell us more about the victim? Like, for example, his name? Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just called him Lely. The uh, uh, nickname? I guess. He came from Lelystad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. He tried to pr I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Lelystad. That's a good start. Lieutenant writes it down in his notebook. And tears out a page and hands it to you. We have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone can't answer. Young well, oh. So, one thing to think about. During that field autopsy, we talked about doing a toxicology report we should have to send off. And she's confirmed that they were basically on, like, a booze, sex, drugs binge. So, yeah, it's going to come back full of stuff. The young woman cranes her neck trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it, a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink. missing pieces of a puzzle of flesh. All right, one by one. Where is your Lelistad? The place, I mean. In Oranye, officer. It's a, I think, municipality is the term. A, a nowhere town there. You were almost right, officer. That means his race was Occidental, not Mondial. I'll update the form. Uh, so you were both from Oranye? Yes, we were compatriots. Interesting. Did that bring you together? No, he was too old for that. And from another part of Oran... Oranian Rick. Like Iceland, almost. I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together wasn't Oranye, it was bad habits. Sex and alcohol. Exactly. Uh, how old was he, miss? He was... 42. 42, are you sure? I would have had him above 50. He had many scars that made him appear older, but no, the memory makes her smile. We even celebrated his birthday, like, some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Hmm. Looks like you were right, officer. The lieutenant taps on his notebook once, as though assigning some kind of point. Nice. Points are good. Have one, you old dog, before we all die. Thank you. Oh, I, I didn't know it was a competition, Kim. It isn't. Police work is a cooperative sport. Uh, what about his eye color? Uh, blue? Light blue? They were like... She stops. Her eyes half closed and continues. Like little blue galaxies, you know? It was strange. Seeing those eyes and his fucked up face. Pardon the swearing. She takes a drag. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. He 
And he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something watching him speak. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth. Yes, uh, severe. She seems to enjoy the word. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. Oh, yes. His hair, if you can remember. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine, made it oily. Not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. Oh, interesting. I, t I too stroked his hair, actually. Oily, isn't it? She says unfazed. She draws in her cigarette and lets the smoke linger for a moment in her mouth. We have that in common now. Uh, Kim, I said to put the brilliantine on the phone. Do I get a point? Uh, no, he says dryly. Yeah, but I put it I put it down there. I can see you've put down quite a few things here. They don't all give you a point. <sighs> there it is in your rushed writing, right where the lieutenant is pointing. Fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> Should really get this questioning back on track. Hey, uh, yeah, he had a tattoo as well. Yeah, did you guys ever talk about that? What did it mean? Oh, she smiles. That. It's clear she liked it. Yeah, you liked it, didn't you? Quite a lot, yes. Was it a map of his service history? Sure, service history. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. Showing off to chicks? How so? How? Imagine him lying in bed, freakish, musculature, laid out on the sheets, scarred, of course, tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. Is this orange yeast lit? Hey, is this orange yeast lit? Yes, this is the very essence of orange yeast lit. A moment's respite, dark and hopeless as the struggle itself. She leans even further back to demonstrate. He's smoking and drinking, of course, and his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them, maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like, she points at the air with her sharp nailed finger, pointing out at this imaginary tattoo star. What was this, baby? And he says, she lowers her voice comically, that was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, okay, but what's this, baby? And he's like, some bad shit there. Killed some loincloths. And so it goes, star after star, port after port, third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. Uh, you were the woman in this, I guess? Oh, yeah, she nods. Now, can you tell us precisely what these mean? Hand her the photo. No, thank you. She does not take it. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. She pours herself some coffee. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with sick, thick arms from a small town. He was also poor, and the government of Oranye needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer for money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredefort. Uh, then he killed some people on the Seminine Islands and on other islands too, all of the islands. After this, he came to Revishal and got killed himself. Well, not a very fun story. It is when you're high. Can be very exciting then, and you have the tools to deal with it. It's not a very nice story to remember when you're so sober. She smiles faintly. Uh, we ordered a toxicology report. Any idea what that will show us? A real rainbow splattering of pharmaceuticals, I bet. Barbiturates, amphetamine, sildenafil, as we guessed. How, does much does, how much does that toxicology report cost the police of Revishal? I can do it for half that. Save you some money, make some myself. It's quite expensive, miss, but we'll manage without your help for now. Uh, I think we've finished with this line of questioning. All right. Coolly, gracefully, she pours herself more coffee. Hey, uh, I noticed your room is pretty close to mine. I got a personal question. Yes, you're just one room away. Very personal. Uh, were you in on Sunday night? I need to know what I did before I lost my memory. New task to ask her about Sunday night. Uh, you do not need to know that. Lieutenant taps on his notebook. What you do need to is to ask normal police questions, like he waits for your sentence to finish. All right, we're going to come and talk to her l when he's not around, I think. Actual art degree done. Okay, minus one hand-eye per 
conceptualization passives heal plus Monrel and give 10 XP. Well, that's not bad, actually. And shake from anger of, of how shit it all is. Trite, contrived, mediocre, milk toast, amateurist, infantile, gl cliche, and gonorrhea ridden, uh, pay to conformism, I fucked me, affront to humanity, war crime, should literally be tried for war crimes, resolutely shit, lacking in imagination, uninformed reimagining of, limp wristed, premature, ill informed attempt at, talentless fuck fest, recid recidivistic shit peddler, pedantic, listless, savagely boring, just one repulsive laugh after another. Oh, huh. that's a cool one, actually. Okay, so we need to ask Klaas... Klaasier. When Kim's not around, exactly. Okay. She must know something. And now we need to talk to Titus again about this guy. Visual Gaga, wait, stop. That man, blow to beyond all recognition, was 42? That's what she said, yes. Below the damage, the weeks of decompetition, all the swollen dignity of mortality. He was 42 years old? Yeah, where is this going? How old are you? That's where this is going. 45,000 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. What lies beneath you, you wonder? You could ask either one of them. Hey, uh, miss, how old do you think I am? Huh? How old do you think you are? How old do I think you are? She's buying down your form like the best answer. I don't know. 80? 100? One year old? I don't know how to say what I'm supposed to say. How old is the sorriest age? <laughs> ah, I think I'm like... Circa 55. You're not. He's squinting at you. Sure he is. You know, age is just a number. Uh, yes, but for him that number is 56. Wait, this requires scientific measurements. Bring it on. I'm not afraid of the truth. Thought gain. Data birth generator. <laughs> to the laboratorium. Oh, sick. All right. What's this? Look, a handful of dried white wildflowers. Hello. Just as you look at the flowers, a gust of wind raises them from the roof, picking them up in the air. 42%. Nice. I don't know why, but it's nice. You catch a single white flower between your fingers. The rest fly off into the wind. It's a Maybell. Young woman looks at the Maybell in your hand, just a glance, then takes a drag of her cigarette. Lieutenant gives you an acknowledging little nod. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. Uh, it's not something we actually... Oh, there it is. Dried Maybells. This is a wildflower you caught, one of a bouquet of mugets that was found on the whirling roof. It's shedding its petals quickly in your pocket. Six crumbling petals rest in your palm. They're white, a bell-shaped crown. Hey, uh, Kim, what is this? This is the Insulindian lily, called Maybells, or Lucille's tears during the Revolution. Girls used to pin them on soldiers before sending them off to battle. Uh, who pinned them? What's that? The revolutionaries, so the communards and the anarchists. White's their color, but the custom started in the suzerain's army, so it held meaning for the kingsmen, too. It's about sad. It's about girls and boys more than sides. Girls sending off boys who are going to their deaths, then also dying themselves in the ruins from dysentery and consumption. It's a symbol of the Civil War. Oh, does this flower blossom in early spring? Yes, but not this early, to my knowledge. It looks dried, preserved. Huh. Uh, is it a coincidence it's being up on this roof, or... Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Could be something to do with the greenhouse, maybe? Mm -hmm. And she's the only one that has access here. Huh. Uh, very well. The petals feel dry and fragile in your hand. Water flows under the channel bridge. Dark water. You rub your hands for warmth, but there is none. Let's blow in the fingers. Inland above the Martinez distributary. The channel that brought... Wastewater from the dark from the silk mills of Jamrock, then dead bodies during the war. The wrinkled fingers of an old man crush flower petals and sprinkle them in the stream like white salt. Huh. Okay. So now we've got the data birth generator. Your face looks like it's 58, your body feels like it's 60. So we want to get into this, but we're gonna have to get rid of one. Uh this one's probably one that I could get rid of. Ten cents for green orbs. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. All right, to Titus. Oh, wait a second. We didn't see this before. 
This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. I guess because it's nighttime now. Let's run our finger across the surface of the glass. Smooth as ice, there are spots of mud and rain on the outside, even smudges. But the surface of the window is clear from the inside. No chips, no hairline fractures. Following your lead, Lieutenant leans in closer to inspect it. Hey, uh, this window was recently replaced, Kim. Yes, looks like it. Huh. Okay. I also wonder... Uh, I'm just going to check. This door up here, I'm not going to kick it again. I'm going to see if we equip the um, pry bar. That might help us. It's doubtful, but... Uh, let's go flashlight over here now, too. No. Okay. So, a window is broken here. I mean, we broke our window. Uh, so... <laughs> Anyone could do it. I don't know what relevance that has yet. If any. But maybe they were just partying hard and it broke or who knows. Could be nothing, could be huge. Okay, so a couple of things. We need to figure out if we're putting Kim to bed here. Victims tattoos, ask another about the tattoos possible meaning. Yep. Uh, badge, karaoke. We need to call back tomorrow for the victim's armor. Find a way into secret passage, working on it. Reality lowdown, Joyce. And we have to probably talk to her without Kim as well. Uh, we also want to go get the boots. Um, in the bear chest. Uh, close the water lock on Wednesday. So hopefully we can uh, go over there tomorrow. Joyce's info on the lynching jam mystery. We've got to report back to Joyce because we talked about that that cabin or the uh, lorry cabin as well. Um, find cigarettes. Talk to Titus. Signatures for Everart. And this is over in that other area too, right? Isabel and Lillian in the nameless fishing village. Yeah. Now the thing with this is that this is basically going to screw them over and they're going to live in sh like a shitty situation for a couple of years. So... All right, I think we can put Kim to bed. Uh, let's go to our room. See you in the morning. Yeah, good night, buddy. Have a good one. I'm totally going to stay in here for the rest of the night. See ya. There was a check we can go back here to, right? Yeah, Joyce told about the new encyclopedia. Not a great chance. Like the rest of you, it comes up from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know. All right, that was fun. Okay, let's go talk to uh, the woman. Then we have to get the boots off the body. Then we talk to Joyce. That's the cycle. Or that's the, the order of operations. All right. Officer. Yeah. What brings you up here in the rain? Well, uh, I, what is this wildflower I found up here? She looks at the dried petals in the palm and lightly touches one with her fingernail. Pretty. Looks like a dried Maybell. Is that the one you caught? Sambo style? <laughs> What's Sambo? A martial arts, sir. Is that it? Somewhere in boxing or Sambo. Graceful martial arts stuff. Sambo style implies stealth and cool. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, why was it there? Why, was there a flower on the roof? I don't know, officer, because of the wind. Or an admirer. You got any admirers, miss? Admirers? I'm too old to be a debutante. And this place is no fashionable society. I feel like she might have a few, so... Might be relevant, might not be. Hey, uh, now that Kim's in here, can you tell me about Sunday night? Ah, uh, yes. The night before I saw you in the hallway and... Reminded you, you're a police officer. Yeah, it's one of the first things I remember doing in Elysium. Wow, she nods. Elysium, you don't hear that term often. She's a glib girl, but she liked the wording. Yeah, did you hear something Sunday night from my room? Well, there was a usual ruckus, loud disco music. Did I have any visitors? I can't say. Probably not. Sounded like you were flying solo. And you mentioned loud disco music. Oh, yes. Various artists. Ostentatious orchestration. Prime among them. 
She arches her eyebrow, waiting for it to connect with you. Oh, oh, second time we've heard about this. We're huge where I come from. I was very young then, of course, like seven. Life gets hard, she says, half singing. But we go on. Hey, yeah, we go on, all right. I don't know about that. I stopped at, at around two o'clock. The disco stopped and there was a change of pace. Oh, what happened? A slow, sad song started playing, like organ music on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Uh, some of the time you were yelling along to it. What was I singing? That it doesn't matter anymore and that we are all alone now? It was difficult to tell. The song itself was very quiet and soft, but you sounded like a wounded boar, sir. It was hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. Uh, when, when you say wounded, you mean like in a cool way, like a wild beast? Oh, yes, it was very cool. <laughs> Good. And then what happened? Well, then you started screaming and trashed the place. Are you sure I wasn't being assaulted? No, it didn't sound like there was a fight. It sounded like someone was trashing their room. She takes a sip of her coffee and smiles. A window was smashed, the tape player probably, the song stopped, and furniture too. A real destructathon. There was screaming. Then I think you passed out. Oh, please tell me there wasn't anything else. Oh, there was. <laughs> I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable. I went out afterwards. Everything was quiet by then, around four or five. And that was it. Oh, thanks, I guess. No problem, sir. She feeds herself another cigarette. So we went in, she, we went in and freaked out like we expected. <laughs> Um, we know who reported calling the crime. Fine. Learned a little bit about uh, what we did the night before all of this. So let's try and go get those boots. I don't know if that's going to lead us to anything, but we'll have them. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. We'll see if Titus is here, too, but he might be gone for today, too. And I don't know if we should talk to him without Kim. And he's still here. Hmm. I'm going to go deal with the body first. I feel like that's something I want to handle. And then we can kind of, like, tell Kim that we're done with it or whatever. What's this? Shivers all around you. The rain falls on the great city of Revishal. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. What am I doing, Shivers? Looking up at the sky, cold water dripping from your hat. What do I see? Gray sky like great battleships. Clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. Now, how does it feel? Humid, your coat shields you from the rain while the shitty sivers around you. Oh, what's in the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean, wave after wave, washing the coast of Martinez with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of half-sunken sea fort crumble on the inlet beyond the Bay of Revishal. Ghosts rise into the sky. Uh, who are you, ghosts? The skyscrapers of the Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. Will you ever go there? I don't know. Will I? No. You are just one of hundreds of thousands who watch them rise across the Bay of the Martinez. Run our fingers through our dampened hair. Hair is an oily mess, flecked with ash from neighboring coal plants. A oh, motherfucker. These springs thaw will not last. The winter will return to Revagal. Revishal. All right. Thank you, Shivers. 75 points away. So now, if we want to continue to, like, get into some of these more interesting ones, like, this one seems big. It's very personal, obviously. Seven hours long to do, so. Uh, what's happening here? There we go. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious for men, No larger than a single grain of malt. 
You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever.